Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. So in this video, I want to talk about chronic training load and your biggest event. And while the numbers and the wattage and the data is all extremely important, we've talked about a lot in this channel. This video is a little bit different because I know we all want this perfect equation of how to show up at our best on race day. And it's not always possible. So this video is a little bit of what I call like the foofy, like touchy feely. There's some vibes to this one, but getting in touch with how you feel as an athlete is incredibly important. You know, we have to remember there were athletes not too long ago that were winning Olympic medals and world champions, and there were not things called power meters or even a heart rate monitor. So how did they do it? We need to use the tools that we have as an adjunct to how we are training and feeling as an athlete. And there was a comment made to me that an athlete with a chronic training load of 85 will last longer in a road race than an athlete with a chronic training load of 70. And my brain exploded when I heard that. And I want to talk about what that even, why did my brain explode when I heard that, but also what can you do to make sure you are feeling your best and showing up at your best on your race day. And yes, some of this will come with experience, but that is part of this journey. I think a lot of the, since we're so metric focused these days, a lot of it is if I do this training plan, I'm going to increase my FTP. I'm going to be ready for the race. I'm going to know everything. And it's always amazing how many pearls and nuggets athletes pick up in their first year or two and their head is still spinning a little bit because they start to realize wow there is so much to this endurance sport game that i have to learn in order to reach my best embrace that that is part of this journey if you want to know there's no exact manual to get from a to b and if you watch yourself grow over the next 5 10 15 years as an endurance athlete it's going to be an amazing journey so before we start this video a uh, quick shout out to our new subscribers on YouTube, Street D Street Dreams with a Z, Matu, Swart, Willie, Claremont, Ismail, Lubomir, Kolya, Earl, Rich, Julian, him, and Christian. Thank you, everybody. Um, if you like the channel, please like the video and subscribe. It tells the algorithms, hey, this is a worthwhile channel and video to watch. Of course, please share it with one of your cycling friends. It really helps us out a lot. So first thing that people are going to say is, well, chronic training load is fitness, but we do know that it's not race readiness, right? You could drive your chronic training load up by doing a ton of training over five weeks and be exhausted. Cody Stevenson, in the podcast that we did with him, he's from Training Peaks. He doesn't even use the PMC manager chart that much anymore because he noticed it just wasn't consistent with how his athletes felt and performed because he had quote, he had said because of how he trained them in a more polarized fashion. If you go back and look at training and racing with a power meter, another metric, TSB, your training stress balance, they say that it doesn't have to be zero, but you want to make sure it's trending upwards. So there's all these metrics within the performance manager chart. No one's really talking about acute training load, which is very important. I just drove mine up massively before I'm going on vacation. That doesn't mean as that drives up my chronic training load, that doesn't mean that I'm race ready. If I went back and looked at some of my most recent best performances, and I've made videos on these, so I'll reference them, like amateur nationals in Florida, tour North Georgia win when I bridged up to Michael Hernandez, Jimmy Sherman, and a couple other guys and won that race. If I go on these two, three-week streaks of just trying to crush KOMs and getting a bunch of them, um, I've made some videos on those. Grand Fondo Nationals is more of a climbing race where it's like four segments. So that's kind of like a big, longer version of a KOM day. Masters Nationals or way back even Fort McClellan, where I was 10th behind Greg Henderson from Sky. Uh, everybody knows Travis McCabe, Eric Marcotte, um, Diaz won from uh, that's when UHC was still the big pro team. If I look at all those races, there's no perfect CTL. There's no perfect week before. Sometimes I had two rest days that week. Other times I rode four days into the race. Other days I've had a crit on Wednesday, a crit on Saturday, and then the road race on Sunday. Like It's never anywhere near the same. But what do we want to touch on? How do I feel? And do I feel 
fatigued, or even if you have riding in the legs, you, you need to tap into when you don't have that overdrive. You know, those days where you go out and it's like, Hey, if I had to do a VO two max effort today, it's just not happening. That's clearly what you want to know. What did you do before that? So that you feel tired and don't do that before a race, like getting into the feelings is going to help you out so much more than just looking at the numbers. Looking at the numbers can be very misleading because what did the athlete just do to achieve that score of 85 or 70? Are they tired based on their feelings or on their numbers? We don't even know what their TSB or ATL is. What kind of race are they going to? And what are the athlete's strengths and weaknesses? That also matters. And then it's only one metric. It is not race readiness. The athlete with the 85 could have just done two weeks of sprint training. They're not ready for a road race or they, they could still have sure road race fitness, but they're not as strong as if they had, um, you know, not done six days of sprint training. Let's say they're going to definitely have fatigue in the legs from that if they're truly doing sprint training. And these are just like any, you could come up with any scenario, right? What I think is more important is if you do start to glance at chronic training loads, where is it relative to your normal training load? If you're normally around, 100 CTL and you're driving it up to 115 because gosh darn it, higher CTL is better and you show up tired. Well, that's the lesson learned. This is not the one metric that you should use to guide you to your big event. Also, have you ever noticed you can be mid block and you have this crazy ride on the weekend with your friends or you go out and you just crush a workout? It's because you don't always need to be tapering. You can be building fitness and have breakthrough workouts. It's not like you only have breakthroughs after rest weeks or after the first week of training after a rest week. As you are building fitness, you are going to have some amazing days. I think the one thing that we want to tap into, again, this foo-foo feeling vibe is, hey, I just had a great day. I'm riding really well. I probably have a few more in this block before I start getting tired. So you need to look how far out is your event. If this is happening three weeks before your event, that's a great thing because now you can rest and kind of do it again before the event. Tapering is good in the terms of scrubbing off the fatigue from those super threshold vo2 max super hard efforts scrubbing off fatigue from threshold lactate uh threshold efforts but if you look at you know people always say what's the science on this you can look at there's a great nordic paper road to gold where they looked at hey there's all these theories about two week tapers let's look at what athletes who have won gold medals actually do and i think it was 18 athletes these athletes do not greatly reduce the training. They do not greatly reduce the intensity. They train pretty normally. They just make sure they're not super tired. And some actually increase their training. And I'll link to this paper that you can read through. It's pretty interesting. So if you're having these upswings, have some caution. You know, Don't overdo it so that you show up tired. But you want to scrub off the fatigue and just ask yourself, do I feel ready to crush? And then what are you going to do for the few days before that race. A lot of this is feeling and we get nervous that we're not doing enough. And that's when people do too much before their event. They're like, you know, it, it's just this fine balance. It's the art of coaching. It's the tapping into what your athletes are doing. It's tapping into how you are feeling. Part of this is going to be experience that yes, it, it takes time. And that's, I mean, I've showed up to amateur nationals in 2011 or 12, and we just had, we tapered too much. We rested too much. I felt horrible. Hey, I learned that that's part of this experience. Part of it is understanding what makes you tired. Part of it is also at the other extreme, keeping the volume up and riding enough, but not destroying yourself. So I think the biggest things that you can ask yourself is what have I been doing? And how tired do I feel? Okay, so you're looking at the numbers. What have you been doing? But you're also asking the feelings. I mean, this could be another video in itself. Has the training matched up to the event? Are you doing things that are going to be applicable to your event? That's super important. You should be gaining confidence in your workouts as you get closer to the event. If you're not riding well, you're either already tired. You need to just rest. Don't keep digging the hole more. And look critically back. What have I been doing? And if you have one bad ride, don't freak out. It's it's okay to have a bad ride before an event. I've been tired the week before an event. I'm like, oh, okay. This is the most fitness I can get. I need to rest a couple of days. I'm going to do a, a hard ride to keep the sword short, sword sharp, 
but my numbers might not be amazing because I was just tired a couple of days ago. And then I'm going to like rest the day and do openers and then I'll be fine. And you need to have that faith in your training that you can feel not great, rest up a little bit. And if you've been riding well, trending well, for the most part, feeling good, you're going to feel good on your event. Oh, so much of this is in your head. I, I promise you that. And that's why this is a foofy video. There's no perfect answer to this. Um, and then the last thing, the week before or the week of the event, just don't rest so much, especially for longer events. It's been shown that you you should test this on your own. 95% of people, if they rest too much, they feel horrible. That's Think about a rest week. Like nobody feels good after a rest week. There's a few freaks out there that, and I say that in a good way, that you can rest a ton and you feel good. Most of us don't got to have some riding legs. Just don't go out and absolutely destroy yourself. But there's, there's no perfect. I've done B races where I've done a crit and then had to do, and I shouldn't even call it a B race. I've done actually, it was Tonga. I did a crit and then I had to do the crit for the race. And then I did a road race. And the next day I won a, the road race and felt amazing. And it's like, that doesn't make sense, but I felt really good. So just keep doing this. I know this this video maybe doesn't help you out, but I think it should help you out in knowing that if you're looking at every event and trying to mathematically calculate every little detail to your big event, I think you're going to waste more time than focus on your training that applies to your race, focus on fueling, sleeping, all the things off the bike, crush a bunch of workouts, scrub off the fatigue and go to your event and that will that event you might have a hard ride on Tuesday that you want to go to. Go to the ride. Just make sure that Wednesday, Thursday, you have time to recover before maybe an opener's ride on Friday. Or, you know, there's a million ways to do this, but experiment and figure it out. Uh, let me know what you think of this. I mean, this is more of like a conversation. I wish this was like an open forum because I'd love to hear what people are doing and how you handle the non-mathematical side of of cycling and endurance sports and going by feelings that's really really important so even when athletes don't comment on rides i'm like how are you feeling what's going on tell me what's going on that's really important versus just the numbers good luck with your training and racing talk to you later